Tevat Travel Guide, Volume One. Tevat Geographic Special Edition. Alice's Mondstadt Diaries. Dada Upa Gorge. The three Hilichurl tribes located in this valley are all densely populated. What if we built a huge spinning ball-shaped cell in the center of the valley and threw all of the Hilichurls into it? That way, we might be able to generate enough energy to power all the mills in Mondstadt for at least five years. If we took it one step further by grinding the Hilichurls that are too old or too weak into food and feeding them to the strong ones. We might just build ourselves a perpetual motion machine that can support a huge factory like in Snezhnaya. It seems totally feasible to me. But when I told Miss Lisa about this idea, she just looked at me and pondered in silence for a long time, then changed the subject gracefully. Star Snatch Cliff. The Animal Archon is a bit too undisciplined for me. If I were a god. I would not have allowed my realm to look so unorganized and ragged. With enough bombs placed in proper positions, even huge cliffs like Star Snatch would crumble into dust in a second. With flatter terrain, Mondstadt would surely look much nicer. But that unctuous cavalry captain rejected my proposal instantly. He even asked me to stay away from Star Snatch Cliff. Wind rise. At the center, there is a huge oak tree. It is said that Vanessa ascended there. I searched around the tree for a long time, but did not find any launching device. I grabbed some hillichurls nearby to put my theory to the test. Sadly, the longest flying distance was from here to the hunter's hut around Springvale. How disappointing! Falcon Coast. My unsuccessful experiment caused quite a stir in Springvale, so Miss Jean from the Knights of Favonius arranged someone to keep tabs on me. All I could do all day was wander around at Falcon Coast. This is such a boring place. Those stupid eagles hovering in the sky and puffed-up animal slimes all bored me to death. The worst of all was that I had nothing to do. On the other hand. The outrider girl who was sent to monitor me had quite a lot of fun with the kids. Whispering Woods, yet another forest in Mondstadt. This outrider named Amber seemed to know her way around this place. The explosive toy she carried around caught my attention. With some tweaks, I could turn it into something that could blow this forest and even the nearby mountains into smithereens easily. My proposal seemed to scare her, but an explosive stuffed toy is indeed a brilliant idea. I must try it out next time. Bright Crown Canyon. I finally got rid of that stalker from the Knights of Favonius. This valley I found at the northeast coast of Cider Lake is still guarded by ancient mechanisms, but the soldiers responsible for holding the pass for the King of Gales were nowhere to be found. All the winds of time had left behind were the unintelligent hillichurls and silent mechanical guards. My attempt to control ruin guards with hillichurls failed as well. The guards split into pieces, and as for the fate of the hillichurl strapped onto it, I will spare you the gory details. Half of the ruins were also destroyed in the process. Storm Terror's Lair, Bright Crown Canyon, leads to this huge ruin of an ancient city, which was built by the cruel king of Gales, Decarabian. The city was built in a ring shape. It seems that every resident of the city had been arranged their own spot between the inner and outer rings. Right in the center of the city was the tall tower where the King of Gales resided. The ruins of the domain of this cruel king, who once tried to control his people's lives, are now utterly deserted. I blew up a few arcades so people can climb up the tower more easily. Looks quite good to me. The ruin feels more ancient now.